First of all, I, I want to thank uh, Nasser and Said for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to give this talk. So I will talk on the geometry of non-commutative deformation. It's uh, uh, a work. Okay, sorry. It's uh, a work with my student Zuhair Sasai. And it's based on the work of Hawkins. The idea of the, uh, the st this talk is the following. We take a manifold <coughs> and we associate to, uh, and an algebra associated to this manifold. We deform this algebra in an algebraic way and we get some geometric structure on the manifold, which are, which can be considered as necessary condition to have this deformation. And we study manifold having this, uh, uh, these structures. It's what we call the geometry of the deformation. <laughs> okay, so I will give the origin of the problem which I, uh, I have said it's the, based on the work of Hawkins. I will define the basic tools used uh, by Hawkins. I will give the Hawkins result and I will give what we have uh, <coughs> down with my students uh, to react to uh, the Hawkins result. So I will give uh, a fundamental example, a problem and the solution of this problem. <coughs> so I will start, but what I mean with a deformation of an algebra. So if we take an algebra, a deformation is just uh, an extension which have this form, where, sorry, where H is a central element and which it's not a divisor of zero in this algebra. I, I, uh, I give now an example. This example, it's not interesting, but it, it's just to demystify a little bit this definition. So if you take A0 as the uh, C, the algebra, the associative commutative algebra C, you take A as the algebra of polynomial, and uh, the map from A to A0 is just the evaluation in one point. The kernel of this uh, map is just uh, the polynomial which are multiplied by x minus a, and we get an example. But it's not an interesting example because for Hawkins, the, 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 the purpose is to start with the commutative algebra and to get a deformation or non-commutative algebra. In this case, it's not the case. So the example in the, in the main of Hawkins was this one. You take the, sorry. You take the algebra of function on a manifold and you take A, which are four uh, formal series of function and you define a star product on this, uh, on A, uh, which has this form uh, defined on the element of A0, and you extend the star product to the all A by linearity, and you take P, it's equal to. 
uh, the existence of a star product or star product must be also uh, associative. The existence of star product was uh, <laughs> uh, proved by a famous theorem of Konsevich, which shows that such a thing existed. What Hawkins have done? He have done something more general. He, he started with not only the algebra of function, but all the algebra of differential form, which is uh, a graded algebra with a differential which act as a derivation, and he considered a deformation of this algebra in the sense I gave before. Here you, you must, I must say that the, the, the deformation, uh, uh, A must be also a differential uh, uh, algebra. We must have an operator D which acts uh, by derivation. So if you have this, you can define this new bracket on, uh, on the algebra of differential form. What you do, you take two elements where are image of alpha and beta. Their bracket must be in the kernel of P, because P is a homomorphism of algebra. So it must be written H multiple something, so you can divide by H, it has a sense, and H is uh, <coughs> an element which is uh, not divisor of zero, and you take this, <coughs> so, and it's well defined, we, you, you can see if you take a, an, another representant of the image, it it's, it's will give the same thing. Okay, now, uh, by its constriction, this new bracket on the algebra satisfies some, uh, it's a Poisson bracket uh, on the algebra of differential form. And it's entirely defined by its evaluation on the function and on the function and the unform, because it is local, and locally every differential form can be written as a pro, uh, the, the function and the unform uh, uh, generate the algebra of the of differential form locally. <coughs> so what we get? We get a B vector field P, and. Uh, D, which uh, I will explain what it means. So, D uh, you can be considered as uh, a map, a bilinear map on the uh, and forms. And it satisfies, if you write the Riblin laws, it satisfies this condition and it's what is known as a contravariant connection. I will come back to this, uh, to this notion. So, what, if you write the Jacobi identity, you get that P is a Poisson tensor, it, the curvature of D is vanishes, vanishes and a new tensor will appear, which is the mic curvature of T vanish also. I will give the, uh, the exact definition of what, all what is uh, presented here. So, uh, the triple, the manifold, the B vector, and the connection constitute what is the deform, what is the geometry of the deformation. So, what we get, I will write it here. You have, you deform the formation 
and what you get with the, the curvature and and P is a Poisson tensor. So now, <coughs> but uh, what uh, Hawkins was interested about Riemannian manifold, about deforming a Riemannian manifold. So to a Riemannian manifold, there is a, an algebraic object which is associated to any Riemannian manifold, what is called O spectral triples. It consists of an Hilbert space, which is the space of section of the spin uh, vector bundle, an algebra, which is the algebra of function, and an operator, which is Dirac operator. So I will not uh, enter in this detail. What I, I can say is if you deform this algebraic spectral trap, the deformation of this algebraic induce a deformation on the algebra of differential form. So it will give rise to a Poisson tensor and a contravariant connection. But the new thing here is that this connection can be defined uniquely from the metric and the Poisson tensor. It's what we call the Levy-Chivita contravariant connection associated to the Poisson tensor and G. So now we have the geometry of the deformation of the spectral trip is now a uh, uh, Poisson tensor and the connection which is defined, and this connection must be flat, uh, meta-flat, and without uh, torsion. Okay, so now I will uh, give in uh, the detail about all these notions. So, what is a Poisson bracket on a manifold? Is it just a bilinear map? on the algebra of function, which is Q-symmetric, satisfied the Jacobi identity and the Leibniz rule. With this bracket, we call M is a Poisson manifold. Now, there are two, exam two interesting examples of Poisson manifold. Any symplectic manifold is a Poisson manifold, and the dual of a Lie algebra has a natural uh, Poisson structure. Okay, now there, there, there are some mathematical objects associated to any Poisson structure. You have the Poisson structure can be defined by a B vector. And the Jacobi identity is such that the Scouten Neonius bracket must vanish for P. There is also a morphism of Victor Bandel, which is just the contraction, and it's called uh, an encore in the language of Lie algebra. With. You have also a distribution which is integrable. This distribution is singular, which means that the, the rank of P in X can vary. It's not constant. And we have an open set, which is dense, called the open set of regular point. A regular point is a point where the Poisson brackets has a locally constant rank. In uh, uh, near uh, this point, the rank of Poisson, the, of the tensor Poisson is constant. <coughs> and we have a Lie bracket on R form called the causal bracket. This, uh, it's a Lie bracket, it satisfies 
de Jacobi identité and in fact it gives early algebraic structure on the cotangent bundle. So here we have some uh, <coughs> some objects naturally associated to a Poisson manifold. Now if you have a Poisson manifold you have only algebra with on the dual and you can define a lot you can mimic what's happened for the tangent bundle and you can define connection and differential and so on and so on. It's what I will. So a contravariant connection on a Poisson manifold is just a, a map like that where you derive a long n form inside of deriving a long vector field. And uh, in the Leibniz rule here, you, uh, the action of vector field on function is replaced by the action of a form via the anchor. So uh, you just mimic and you get uh, a contravariant connection. And uh, <coughs> you can define parallel transport, curvature, and so on. So you have the torsion. Now the torsion is computed by the causal bracket. You have a causal bracket and you have the curvature, which is also <coughs> defined by the causal bracket. So we call the connection torsionless if it has no torsion and it's flat when the curvature vanish. Now there is a fundamental example. When you have a, a Poisson manifold and you take a Riemannian metric, you can mimic the causal formula in the classical case which gives the Levi-Civita connection on the tangent bundle. You replace the action of the vector field by the action of the infor and the bracket by the bracket, and you get a unique connection which has no torsion and which preserves the matrix. It's called the Levi-Civita contravariant connection. <coughs> Now, if you take, if you have a Poisson manifold and you take a contravariant connection, which has no torsion, you can define what is called the uh, Hawkins brackets. It's a Poisson structure on the algebra of differential form. So, uh, it must be Airby linear of degree zero, grads commutative, Leibniz derivation, and it's entirely defined by P and D. And as I have seen uh, before, uh, the algebra of differential form is locally generated by a function and M form. If you now the uh, the bracket the uh, the Hawking brackets on on function and function in M4, you can extend it by using the properties uh, to to get a, uh, <coughs> a, a, a unique expre a local expression and you show that uh, the brackets obtained like that satisfies globally this condition. Now. We can ask a question, is, is this bracket satisfy, satisfies uh, a graded Jaco Jacobi identity? What's about Jac graded Jacobi identity? Under which condition this, this bracket satisfy ja the Jacobi identity? So here we can say that it's, it satisfies Jacobi identity if we have this quantity equal to zero for any uh, difference. But 
this equation is not tensorial in the entries. So it's not something we can use because in, in differential geometry, we like relations which are tensorial so we can work on local coordinates. So it's not the right uh, thing to do. So we must study this, we must study under which condition this, this is true. So let's see what's happened in the low degrees. If you take three function, you will get that g is equal to zero because p is Poisson. It's just the Jacobi identity for p. If you take two function and do one and four, you get the curvature of the connection d. So, a necessary condition is that the curvature of d must be flat, must vanish. And now, if you take two and four as, and the differential of a function, you write what this means. And what we can see, if the curvature of t, this, this expression, define a tensor field. You can show that this define a tensor field on, uh, on the manifold. And the result is g is equal to zero if and only if d is flat and this tensor field is vanishing. And this tensor field, it's what is called the mi curvature of t. Here we must be careful because if you take a connection, the, the meta curvature is defined, to be defined, d must be flat. You cannot define it if d is not flat. So there is a meta curvature only if the uh, d is flat. And it's a complicated tensor field which can be seen as this or can be seen as a, a section of uh, an appropriate vector bundle. Let's, uh, let's see now how uh, this uh, uh, Hawkins brackets lock in low degrees. For two function is just uh, the, given by uh, the Poisson tensor. For a function and the one form is given by the connection D. And uh, if you take two and form, you see that it's become more complicated because the differential intervene and we have an extension of the causal bracket which appears and the meta curvature is, is given by that. This, this uh, make it very complicated because uh, you must take uh, the differential function on a point to get uh, uh, the definition of the meta curvature. And now, uh, in, our, uh, in fact, to deal with the curvature, you must use the fact that the connection is flat and construct a, a parallel section. Donc, so F alpha is parallel to uh, the, uh, the, the, the causal bracket is, has set simple expression and the curvature is very simple also in this case. Now we have seen all what we need to see. We uh, come back to our original problems. So now, uh, if you have a Riemannian manifold and you deform the associated spectral triple, 
what you get, the geometry you get, is a Poisson tensor on, on M such that the levi chivita connection associated must be flat, meta-flat, it's curvature, and uh, the third condition, forget about it, it's, uh, it's not very interesting. But uh, because uh, it, because there is a truss somewhere and uh, Hawkins deform also the truss to get. So uh, the, the, uh, the H1 and H2 condition are the most interesting. And now Hawkins has studied this, this geometry and obtained the following theorem. So if you take a Poisson manifold, with the Riemannian metric, and if you suppose that the manifold is compact and satisfying H1, H2, and H3, then locally, the Poisson tensor is given by a family of linearly commuting Killen vector fields. And the last, uh, property that this amply that the Poisson tensor is also parallel with respect to this connection. This condition does not appear in the theorem of Hawkins. And it's how I come to this problem. I was studying compatibility between Poisson tensor and Riemannian metric and the compatibility condition is that P is parallel and I knew this, I have this example. I have studied without uh, knowing that it satisfies the condition of Hawkins. So it's like that I came to this problem and I uh, say to myself, because in this theorem, even though this theorem is, is local, the compact condition is very important. He used the compacity in uh, an important way. So I say to myself, is there other example? If we drop the compacity, can we uh, give other class of example? So, I saw, so, uh, it's what I have seen, is there in general Poisson manifold with contravariant connection such that the curvature and the mi-curvature vanish? Or is there a Riemannian uh, Poisson manifold with the Riemannian metric such that the levi chivita contravariant connection is flat and meta-flat? And I gave this fundamental example. You take a, a manifold and an axiom of Lie algebra. This means that zeta is just an homomorphism of Lie algebras between G and the Lie algebra of vector fields. And we take a solution of the classical young baxter equation. And we transpose this solution on the manifold, this will give us a Poisson, uh, a, a B vector, which is Poisson on the manifold. And we can also uh, build a connection like that. And the result is that this Poisson tensor and this connection are uh, are, uh, the connection is, is torsion uh, less and flat. And if we have a Riemannian metric and the action is, is given by killing vector fields, this connection is exactly the contravariant Leva-Shivita connection of. And if zeta is free, the meta curvature of the vanish also. After that, 
uh, Mais, I, Zuhair uh, came and they give him uh, for his PhD the, uh, uh, we can say, are there the only example of this situation? Or there is other examples. And we, uh, we put this problem, if you take a Poisson manifold with the contravariant connection without torsion flat and meta flat, uh, is this locally given by uh, only uh, uh, an axiom of Lie algebra and a solution of the classical Young Baxter equation. So uh, we, uh, with Zuhair, we worked on this problem for some time and we cannot solve it. And in fact, why we cannot solve it? Because in our fundamental example and in the example of Hawkins, there are hidden necessary condition we have not seen. So we made the following remarks. So the, uh, the theorem that I can give a, a positive answer to this problem in the compact case with an additional hypothesis. And as I have seen, uh, the Poisson tensor is parallel and this amply that the connection satisfy this relation. If A is the in the kernel of the Poisson tensor, DE is equal to zero. What is uh, this kind of con uh, connection is called F regular connection. So, uh, we must suppose, we must make this hypothesis because it's a necessary condition. In the fundamental example, we have the same situation with the axiom. And in fact, in the fundamental example, the meta curvature has a primitive. There is a, a 2 2 tensor with satisfied DDT, and in fact, it's, it's this tensor who, who vanish in, uh, in uh, our theorem. So now we can reformulate this problem and we, we add the uh, hypothesis that D is, uh, is F regular, and in fact, that is not the meta curvature which van it bus the tensor T. And uh, in this case, we have a, a positive answer to the problems. So uh, Zuhair showed that uh, they are locally, they are the only example which satisfy this condition. Bon, I, I will stop here and thank you. Thank you.